Hey guys, it's been a while. I've been meaning to do a series in Fusion that deals with like small tips and tricks, specifically finding like the hidden little features, the gems inside of the program. Some of these features and tips might be obvious to quite a few of you, but I figure I'll just compile them into this one video and then I'll expand on the tips and tricks in future videos. So let's get started. The first one is adding tools to the flow. So for instance, if you hit control space and type camera, you'll get a camera. If you do control space and do a merge 3D, you'll get a merge 3D. So it's very similar to how applications like Houdini and Nuke and Blender uses uh, the tab or control tab hotkeys to add tools. But in Fusion, you can also do control shift space and that gets you an access to like all the functions within Fusion as well, not just the nodes, but if you have like the need to execute a render, you can execute the render from the menu or you can do control shift space and do about, then you'll get the about menu, etc. This one is a cool little workflow feature. If you have a node with several inputs, and sometimes it's a bit hard to disconcern which input does what, you can actually drag the output, hold the option key, and then let go, and it'll give you an option menu for what kind of input you want to connect to. So in this case, let's say it's a, it's a garbage mat. Because sometimes your cache fills up, and you want to clear out the cache that Fusion uses. And if you go down to the right-hand side uh, corner, where it's a 6% 1900 megabytes, if you right-click on it, you can actually purge the cache. And that'll invalidate all the current caches and clear it up. And if you shift-click the button, you'll get an option of looking at debugging information, specifically related to the graphics card. And they can be quite useful to figure out what your card supports and doesn't support. When working with linear EXR files in Fusion, it's often recommended that you work with a correct lookup table to display them correctly. And you can do that if you right click and choose slot enable. And then in this case, I'm using the OCIO display transforms. But this only works for 2D images. As soon as you bring it into 3D, you lose all of the 2D lookup table functions. So as an example, if you plug it into an image plane, you can see that we're back to no lookup tables. But that's because there's a distinction between the 3D display and the 2D display. So what you want to do is actually right click and then go to global options, enable the buffer LUT, and then you get the same options. For instance, in my case, it's the OCIO display. And then we got to go again, buffer LUT, and I can enable it. And I'm just going to choose my preferred um, OCIO config. In this case, I'm using a linear Rec 709 primary, and then um, the displays I want is an AGX profile. If you want the background color to be dark again, you can go to the global options background color and just set it to black. Now, if we view the 2D image again, you can now see it's even brighter, but that's because we now have two LUTs on them. One of them is a global buffer LUT. That's just anything that's in the buffer, including 3D views. And we have the 2D image lot. So if we go back into here and just disable the regular lot, now we'll have something that works for 2D and 3D. By default, Fusion smooths pixel when you zoom into the image. But if you want to see the actual pixels themselves, you can go to Option and turn off Smooth Resize. That way you get to see the individual pixels. And if you want more control and see them very distinctly from each other, you can go back into the Options and enable Show Pixel Grid. This pixel grid would scale with the image, so when you zoom out, it starts to fade away. Now, if you want your work to actually snap to the pixels, you can right-click and go Controls and enable Snap the Pixel. And that'll snap to the corners of each one of the pixels, so you can see when I start dragging around that things are snapping correctly. Now, subviews in Fusion are incredibly useful. You can enable them by clicking this icon or hitting the V button. And you have a good selection of different subviews that can help you out. For instance, this is the Navigator that when you zoom in, it gives you an idea of where you are in the, uh, in the image. You also have a magnifying tool. You can actually see the pixels beneath the cursor. Another useful one is the 2D viewer, which is just uh, another viewer that you can zoom into and have as a, if you're working on like different parts of the image at the same time, you can have like a, a simple viewer here and then you can, you can start manipulating the tools and see you know, what it does up close as well as on the whole image. Another interesting one is the 3D histogram, which plots each one of the pixels in RGB into a three-dimensional cube that you can rotate and inspect. And most of these subviews actually have uh, options to them. For instance, you can, you can increase the sampling for this one so you get a higher quality uh, visualization of the distribution of colors. So for instance, if it's one-to-one, -one, or you can display them as a solid. 
Now, this is quite a bit more resource intensive, depending on how much uh, samples you have. Or you can display them as a uh, solid, or even just the lines. You also have a dedicated color inspector, a regular histogram that you can check out, and all of these have options. So if you want to see them as lines, and there's an image info that also just displays the uh, attributes of the image. You have a metadata tab that lets you inspect the metadata that's uh, on the current node. There's also a color vector scope, which is quite useful when you're manipulating colors and you're doing uh, mathematic operations to see how they actually perform in the image. And the last one you have is a waveform, which is also quite useful to see the distribution of luminance values, either in uh, all the channels, or you can do uh, a parade and get all the different channels next to each other. And it's also quite useful. Fusion has a built-in render manager that you can use to create your own render farm. If you go to File, Render Manager, here you have it. I just have one node on my network right now. It's just a single computer. But if you have more computers and they just run Fusion or the Fusion standalone server, they'll show up here as nodes being able to render. You can use it just as a render queue so that you can put multiple comps in here that will render sequentially. Here I have a very simple animation. It's just a bit of modifiers shaking the image around. And you can see the green line at the bottom here shows which images are actually cached. So if I hit play, you can see that most of them are cached now. But if I create another node, let's say I want to blur it, and it's a bit intense, you can see that it needs to cache everything again. And it caches as, you, as you're playing it. But what you can actually do is enable background rendering that'll force Fusion to cache the frames when you're not doing anything. So if you look at the cache now, we only cache one frame. But if we go to File, Enable Background Render, and we move one frame, you can see that it starts caching in the background. In this case, it's quite fast because it's a very, very simple comp. But that means everything is cached interactively and you can start changing things. If we hit pause again and we start changing the parameters, you can see that it caches the entire timeline, almost real time. So this is incredibly useful for interactive workflows. Fusion supports relative paths in both the loaders and the savers. In this case, here's the full path to the file but I have the comp saved in the same folder as the EXR. And what you can do is just try comp and then semicolon and it'll load the same file. That's quite useful when you have comps that have relative content to them and you want to package them together for portability. You can actually have a look at what other variables are available for you in the preferences menu. And if you go to the global default settings and have a look at the path maps, all of these variables are available to you wherever you load and save things inside of Fusion. Now this isn't particularly hidden, but it's quite useful to know about. Fusion's nodes are actually stored as text, so you can copy them and paste them into a text editor and inspect them and even save them down. It's quite useful for storing snippets to use later and for sharing online. To have a look at Fusion's different command line arguments, you can execute Fusion by starting it with a dash help. It'll tell you what arguments are available during execution of Fusion. Fusion is very flexible. One of the things you can do is to add new image viewers. This is perfect if you have a second monitor and you want a big display on that screen. Another way to customize the user interface of Fusion is to add a floating frame. And the floating frame is a blank canvas for adding some of Fusion's UI elements onto their own window. So in this case, we can have a panel that just has the spline. You can add things like the, the info about a comp. And let's add an actual flow view. And this is perfect if you have multiple monitors again. That's all the tips. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that would be great. I hope to produce a couple more of these videos shortly.